Loom is a video messaging service that you can use at work to exchange video messages as they call Looms uh, to quickly exchange comments and feedback and code reviews and stuff like that. Um, I don't personally use it, but it seems to be very popular. On March 7th, uh, 2023, they suffered a very bad uh, session cookie leaks, which allowed users to see other users' data. What I want to do in this video is just show you exactly, very summarize how this happened, and then go through the root cause analysis and read through the through the report and try to learn more about it. Let's jump into it. So uh, I quickly drew a sketch of what I derived and understood from the report. So what happens is uh, Loom has the backend, which is the actual application, and they use CDNs to cache, uh, you know, static data, mostly CSS, JavaScript, and stuff like that. It doesn't seem that they cache API responses for obvious reasons, because API kind of changes between one user to another, while static resources such as CSS and others don't change. I know I'm covering the screen, but there is nothing here, really. It's just backend and some two boxes of backend, right? But the first thing that happens here is the when the client logs in, we set a cookie in the browser or any other clients, and each time we make requests from the client, we always send the cookie. And that is our authentication, basically, because HTTP is stateless, right? There is no th there is no one connection that is always identifying us and we have authenticated and we're good. No, we have to send, we have to transfer the state with every request. That's why REST is called state transfer, right? representational state transfer, always transfer the state so you know the server knows you with every single request. With that out of the way, we use cookie for that. So here client X has sent, already logged in, and we have a cookie, it sends a request to get the JS, and it sends the cookie X. The CDN receives it because the CDN is a reverse proxy, that's your, the client kind of talks to the CDN in a sense, right? And then the CDN checks its cache. If the JS file is there, it will serve it. If it's not, then it will send the same request to the backend to ask it for the actual resource. That's how a CDN works, right? It's a reverse proxy. And the backend will set, will get that request and responds back with the JavaScript, uh, with the resource, the JavaScript in this case. But here's the change that they have. It's not really a change, it's always been there. The backend always, they have this con that there's rolling session cookies, that every time you receive a cookie, they extend the cookie right? after checking certain parameters, right? It's like, okay, let's extend it so that you don't have to log in every time, right? That's, that's the logic they're using. So they will add certain amount of data and bump the expiration date. And, and the moment you do that, you have to set a new cookie. So in the backend, they add, they add a response header that's called set cookie. And that is the problem. This shouldn't always happen. This should always happen, only happen for API requests, not static resources such as JavaScript and CSS. Let's see what will happen when, the, when, you, have, when you do this. When you set the set cookie and you say, okay, this is the new expression is X plus one. The CDN not only caches the actual body, which is the JavaScript itself, but it also caches the response headers, which is the set cookie. What does the set cookie do? The set cookie is actually overrides your cookie with the new cookie. The browser just knows how to do this. When it sees this, it always updates its cookie. But here's the problem. CDN was never supposed to cache the set cookie X plus one. So let me say, what was the problem? It's caching it. So caching it and it responds back to the client. Client X, in this case, is supposed to set the client the cookie X plus one. The problem is if client Y at the same second, which is that's the duration of the cache at this case, it will send a request to say, hey, okay, give me the JS resource and do my cookie is Y because it's a different user. The CDN will say, oh, I don't even need to talk to the backend because it looks only at the request parameters. It apparently doesn't even look at the headers to uniquely identify this request. That is, oh, it's a different thing. It's just like, oh, you're doing to get slash JS? I have that. 
What is it response to? It responds to the client Y with whatever it had. It had the cache JS, but it also had the response header set cookie X plus one. Set cookie X plus one is will tell the client Y, hey, replace your cookie with X. Which is what? What is X? X is the cookies for client X. All of a sudden, now the client will just do that, right? Clients are just following what the server does, right? And frequent requests, subsequent requests from client Y will always now use client, the cookie X, not Y. If you do that, the CDN will just forward it to the backend. Even include, that includes APIs, right? Now your, your cookie is just X. Everything that the client Y will see is now X's data. How bad is this? That is terrible. That is really bad, understandably so. When they changed something, the change that they did that triggered this is actually a change in the CDN. And to be honest, in the report, I didn't see what that change is. And I don't know if they know and they didn't mention it yet, or they're still figuring it out. Again, in this channel, I always guess, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, right? Just take it with a grain of salt. My guess is the chain, they'd say that the change was in the CDN. My guess is that change was supposed to get the static resources. Those static resources, if the resource is a static and not API, then we should strip cookies sent to the backend because the backend is just anything, any cookie that is sent to it, it will reply back with, a, with an extended cookie, the sit cookie. And that's the problem, right? So I think what they change is in the CDN, if anything you receive, always just forward it as is. My guess is previously the cookies for static resources were not sent to the back end. It was stripped here in the CDN. And my guess is the CDN with the configuration change started sending that cookie. And that's where I saw this statement. We started sending. And I don't know who we is really, but again, we're guessing here, right? So they started sending that cookie to the backend and incorrectly the backend started setting that cookie. And of course it, it went bad from there. That's my guess. For them to resolve this situation, what they did is they rolled back this configuration. So Again, my guess is the cookie is no longer being sent. Again, because why, why, why do we need to send cookies for JavaScript and static? This is, these are public things. That's fine. We don't really need to do that. So one fix could be uh, don't implement the set cookie things for static resources, only do it for APIs, like in the back and change the code to do that. Also, you can change the code if you accidentally got a backend that did set a cookie on a static resource in the CDN. Don't do that. Okay, I'm, all, I'm here guessing here. Like, we don't know anything about the source code about this. So we only see the public reaction. Let's go and discuss uh, this. I'm going to read part of this and uh, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit. Summary, during an update to our CDN configurations, we began sending session cookie headers to JS and CSS static endpoints that were served by our application behind our CDN. The application deserialized the session cookie, bumped it, the expiration date that is, and returned the set cookie respond header, which was cached by our CDN for one second. The users who requested the same asset within this, the one second time window would be served the initial user session, whoever cached that, right? That's user X effectively, which could be a different user until the cache was cleared and a new user hit the, the cache. <laughs> the problem will just exacerbate from there. A new user will hit the cache and now people will see that new user's cache. Detailed explanation. They go through this detailed explanation and what they knew I am really interested in uh, in what they solved, the remediation. Let's go through that. There is, there is nothing new here so far. Looking through request log, none of our expected API had responses cached because they don't cache API responses because that doesn't make any sense, right? APIs 
responses mostly are unique per user. So like, imagine I go to Instagram and CDN caches my pictures and this next person, it's like, oh, you're just going to the same rest endpoint slash pictures. Oh, here's a, I have those pictures cached from someone. Here's a bunch of pictures. Ah, uh, probably not a good idea. Instagram is a bad example, but you get my point. How critical is this? I don't know Loom. I don't know this app. I mean, to be honest, let's see. I've seen something related to code reviews. That could be bad. If I start seeing Looms created by user X that shows source code that I'm not supposed to see, that is a really bad. You know, that is disaster. You just leaked code that you're not supposed to be. That's IP, right? That's my guess, at least. That's the worst thing that I can think of. Video of someone explaining something. Uh, who cares, right? The user who requested the same asset within one second. Yeah, same. same. Okay. Going forward, remediation. What are you guys going to do? Going forward, we will be doing the following to remediate any potential similar leak. Because that's a bad leak. We will be ensuring our CDN always strip out the session cookie in the response headers. That means the set cookie, I suppose. All right, so the set cookie, not session cookie, as in the, the request cookie. It's a, the response session cookie set co cookie header. We will always ensure it never passes this on this cookie for non-API requests that could be cached. Yeah. All right, so just they will do this change for non-API. Yeah. We will ensure the application does not return session cookies for any static asset it serves. There's no point, right? Session Static resources are static and they are public for everyone. Just consume it. We were updating our review policies accordingly to ensure we catch this type of issue with internal and staging test policies in the future. So that's another question. Why wasn't it caught in the, the testing environment? Right. I assume they would have a CDN in testing, right? This includes testing load against CDN and API changes from multiple user account. All right, so maybe the test was not included in multiple user account. And then this is normal thing because I ran into this while in my testing years back where I, I make the mistake to test only on one user and one user is happy. Although you should really test on under multiple user accounts and things are interesting things happen all the time. We'll be looking into enhancing our monitoring and alerting to help us catch abnormal session usage across accounts and services. Uh, that would be interesting because the session cookie would have to carry information about all of a sudden now, maybe the IP address, uh, although it's not really a good idea because you, you could be on your phone and your IP address can change as you move, of course, through my one network to another. And if you send a session cookie from one IP, that doesn't mean that if you start receiving the same session cookie from the different IP, it doesn't mean that there's someone just stole your cookie. It could be just you moved or you disconnected Wi-Fi and connected through uh, your, I don't know, mobile service, right? Or maybe just connected from one Wi-Fi to another. You were at home and then you removed and then you you took your laptop to, to work and then you connected to the Wi-Fi, of course you're going to get another front IP. So IP is probably not a good idea. I don't know what else could you use. I, I'm not really an expert in authentication. Uh, I'll leave it to you guys. What do you think about this? Um, a kudos to the Loom engineering team for catching this quickly and fixing it, of course. I don't do these videos to kind of dunk on or anything like that. We're here to learn about these things and try to prevent it in the future. And uh, kudos to the engineering team because we're all here, brethren, in the engineering community, trying to learn from each other. Because what if, if, if you, you can stop making fun of these things, but it, it's going to happen to you one day, and, and that's not going to be fun, right? So, uh, yeah, kudos, Vinay Hermeth, a CTO, everybody in the engineering team. Uh, it was an interesting thing. Caching can be dangerous. Who knew? See you in the next one. Goodbye.